What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Lion. I'm a dating coach and I make videos on dating and relationships from a man's perspective, specifically catered to women. So if that's something that you're into or you want to learn more about, please consider subscribing to this channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about a subject that comes up very, very often in my community, in my DMs, uh, in my coaching sessions, and that is how to get a man to not only respect you, respect your time, but even go a step further and actually fight for your time, right? Make sure that the guys that you are dating are consistent, that they are consistently asking you out on actual physical dates, that they are respectful of your time, that they are not canceling last minute, that they show up on time, and actually reschedule the next dates on a pretty consistent uh, and frequent um, basis. One thing I guarantee in this channel, if you're new here, is that I will spare you all the BS, all the fluff, all the sugar coating, and I will get right into the topic. So let's get right into it. The first point that I want to talk to you about, the first strategy that I want to talk about, the first strategy that will allow men to not only prioritize you, to make plans with you ahead of time, actually show up to these plans, respect your time, respect you, and even fight for that time, um, is to be very specific with your availability and be very specific when you are making plans. And remember that you do not have plans with someone unless you have three things established and agreed upon ahead of time. And these, things, these three things are uh, exact day, an exact time, and an exact place, right? In order for you to consider yourself having a date with someone at any given time, you need to make sure that as you're communicating with them, you have established and you have agreed upon on these three things. That you know it's going to be at a specific, on a specific date on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And you're going to meet them at a very specific place, at this intersection, at this park, at the entrance of this restaurant, of the movies, of whatever it is that you you know, want to do or will do with them, but you know exactly um, a location, a time, and a day uh, on which you're going to do it. So things that are unacceptable are things like, um, oh, let's just maybe hang out this weekend. Or, you know, and this is something that happens pretty often during conversation, especially at these early stages. Both of us want to seem aloof and we don't want to be too aggressive. So these things tend to happen on a pretty frequent basis, right? We talk with someone. Again, let me know if that's something that happens to you in the comments. But we're talking to someone and they say something like, oh, well, we should do something this weekend. And you're like, oh, yeah, we absolutely should do something this weekend. And the conversation kind of takes a different um, uh you know, turn right now when you start talking about other things and you never really revisit the details of this date. And the weekend comes, ar comes around and you're kind of in the point uh, where you're thinking, wait, wait, should I make other plans? I know that my friend wanted to do something with me, but I want to keep myself um, available because I really want to get to know this person. He seems really nice. He seems cute. I want to potentially see him. So maybe I should keep myself available. Do I wait for him to call me? Do I call him? but I don't want to seem too desperate, right? If you've been in this situation before, just drop a comment and tell me, yes, I've been there. Because again, this is something that I know I get a lot of questions about. Um, so in order to avoid that, right, you do not have a date, right? You do not have a date unless you have these three things, um, you know, agreed upon. So things like maybe do something this weekend or are you available this Saturday or what are you doing on Tuesday? Okay, cool. I'll call you after work. None of these are plans. However, you can make it easier for the guy to actually make concrete plans with you by saying this. So next time someone says, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Or would you like to go grab coffee with me? Or would you like to go to you know, the movies? Or whatever it is that you decide to do on that date. Um, you can be very specific when you're confirming the plans, right? So instead of saying, yeah, I'm available sometime next week or I'm busy today, but I could do something you know, tomorrow, be very, very, very specific. So you can say something like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'm available on, give him a day, Tuesday, right? This coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. And I can meet you. Let's say you were talking about coffee or let's say you were talking about, you know, a walk in the park, whatever that is. Tell them where you're going to meet them, um, right? So if you know of a good place, you can just suggest it at this point. Um, let's say if it's coffee or if it's a park, especially if it's like the early, early, early stages, like it's the first date or so, I would even go ahead and find a place that you personally like as a woman that you enjoy, like, oh, you know, this coffee shop that's really good um, and it's safe and it's close to your house and you like it. Maybe there's a, 
I don't know, specific dessert that you really enjoy, you can use that to your advantage, right? Kind of like a home field advantage on the first date. So you can say, oh, I'm available on Tuesday at 6 p.m. and I can meet you. And you basically just give them the name of the place at so-and-so place at this time. Now, at this point, he can either confirm that and say, yes, that sounds great, right? And, and, and now you have a date and you are expecting him to show up to that date, right, on time and all that. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But if he doesn't and if he says, oh, I'll let you know or that sounds cool or, you know, any variation that's not him actually confirming that that also works for him, you do not have a date. I repeat you do not have a date. So if Tuesday comes around and he's like, oh, are we still on for today? Unless he confirmed and say, yes, we're on, I highly encourage you to make other plans. And if you don't have other plans, tell them that you have other plans, right? Because again, that behavior is what's going to be teaching him for a future reference how he needs to treat you in order to continue getting access to you. So if he doesn't confirm that, if he doesn't confirm the date and again, gives you any variation of like, oh, well, we'll see, you know, when we get close to the date or whatever that is, you are just not available anymore. So if he does call you to confirm a day before or on the day or even just like last minutes or even tells you, hey, I'm here, I'm waiting. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that we didn't really agree on that. I didn't hear, you know, a confirmation. I would love to see you, but I already made other plans tonight. Maybe we can reschedule Right? So you can still stay positive, composed, and, and, and nice and everything, right? Because again, it's not necessarily because he's coming from a bad place just yet. We want to give them the chance to do better, to treat us the way we want to be treated. But we need to remember that our behavior has a lot to do with that. So if he is interested in us and wants to get to know us, he will correct that behavior as long as the way we communicate um, allow him also to do that, right? We, we don't want to kind of like slap him on the wrist and say, you should never do that, or that's a horrible thing, or you, you know, insulted me or whatever. He'll probably just leave at this point. Uh, so we want to give him a chance. We want to communicate positively and encourage a, that, the type of behavior that we want to encourage while doing it um, and communicating it from a place of confidence, from a positive place. All right, number two, and this is an important continuation of the first step, and that is to make sure that you confirm plans um, at least a day before or at the latest the same day with hours before your actual date. So there's no specific time that you want to hear uh, from them by because a lot of it really depends on when your date is actually scheduled for. So if your date is at 3 p.m., which could happen, or maybe even at noon, maybe it's a lunch you know, date, um, that you want to make sure that it's ahead of time. I would say at the very, very, very least, you want them to confirm the date four hours before the actual date. If it's under four hours, honestly, you don't have a date plan and I would make other plans. And even if they do call me like an hour before and be like, hey, are we still on? I would already make other plans because again, we want our behavior to teach them how we want to be treated. And we don't want to be a last minute. We don't want to, hopefully you agree with me when I say that, you don't want to be sitting there, right? On the Tuesday when you know you have the date plan thinking, do I you know, leave home after work or do I stick around because you might take me out and the place that we said we're going to go to is actually closer to my job than it is to my home. And I don't know what to do right now. Should I call him? Should I text him? You don't want to be in that position. And if you don't want to be in that position, don't put yourself in that position. Let's talk about the third step of that strategy. And that is to let the guy know if you had a good time as soon as you get home from the date. So whether that's the first date, second date, third date, fourth date, doesn't really matter. One thing that as a lady, as a woman, you should really do on a regular basis to encourage men to ask you out, to encourage men to want to see you again, to encourage men to really put an effort um, into dating you is to just let them know if you had a good time. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you went for coffee on the first date and you know, as soon as you get home, whether or not you agreed upon or he asked you, right? Some men would ask you to like, let them know as soon as you get home. But even if they didn't, even if he didn't ask you, one thing that I would do as soon as you get home, don't wait till the next day. Don't give it a few hours. Um, don't, you know, wait for him to text you first and then let him know. Stop playing all of these childish games. Instead, as soon as you get home from the date, just text him. Just text him, hey, his first name. Um, thank you very much for whatever. Let's say you had coffee and he paid for your coffee. Say thank you for coffee. If he 
didn't buy you coffee, if you didn't have coffee and you just went to a walk in a park, you can still say thank you for an interesting conversation, right? Or thank you for dinner or whatever that is, right? I had a good time and I'll be happy to do this again sometime. That's it, period. You do not need to say any more than that. Now, the reason why this is such an important strategy and why is it such a successful strategy, and that is, and I know a lot of people refuse to accept that or maybe sometimes don't think about that, but men are human beings, just like women. And we as men have the fear of rejection embedded in us, just like the fear of rejection is embedded in you. And when I say men, I mean the most masculine, the most you know, strong and confident men that you can think of still have the fear of rejection embedded in them. And to be honest with you, the more they appear to be masculine, the more confident they sometimes appear to be, the more they have that fear of rejection embedded in them. So what we want to know, and sometimes we don't really know, sometimes on the first date, and especially because it's social construct for the man to you know, put up all the effort at the beginning. It's up to us to really ask you out the first time. It's really up to us to make plans, and which I agree with, by the way. It's up to us to uh, maybe pick a place. It's up to us to follow up, just like what I mentioned earlier. We don't really get a lot of opportunities up until this point, especially at these early, early stages, to really know and see how you feel. We're kind of just working from the assumption that you are interested. And at some point, because of that fear of rejection, we want to get some level of confirmation that you are enjoying this as much as we do in order to justify continuing that effort. So sometimes on that date, although we might have laughed at a few things and you know it seemed to be a good date, sometimes men might have the impression because you didn't laugh at a certain joke or you didn't find something funny or there was a awkward silence somewhere here and there, all things that are normal to have at these early stages when you're just starting to get to know someone, sometimes we might take them the wrong way. Sometimes we might take them as, you know, falsely take them as signs of the lack of interest. And we might overthink things and we might want to wait and see, well, I don't know if she's really interested. I don't really know if she wants to go on a second date. I kind of have um, the fear that she might even reject me. And a lot of men, again, masculine, strong, confident men, the type of men that you are looking for will overthink things or wait too long to a point where this relationship kind of like breaks apart before it actually even gets anywhere. So that's why this strategy is so easy, right? It takes you literally 10 seconds to do, yet it is so extremely effective. If you can only put and for a lot of women, just your ego at bay for a second and just go through that process. You will see how much more dates you will be getting. You will see how much more effort you will be encouraging in men. So again, after the date, immediately as you get home, just let them know. If you can even add to that text if you want to, hey, I just got home, and then tell them the same thing that I told you before. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for coffee. I'd be happy to do this again sometime. That's it. That's really all you need to communicate, right? That And that also should give you the peace of mind that you have done everything that you should have done at this stage to let him know that you are interested. You plucked away that fear of rejection. And at this point, and I can guarantee you as a guy, I will tell you that at this point, he has basically all the green lights that he might need in order to ask you out for the second date or third date, whatever that date is. If he doesn't do that at this point, it's a very clear, easy indicator that he's just not that interested. So if you do that and then you don't hear from him or you hear from him, but he doesn't actually try to schedule the second date, he's not, he's not asking for your availability, he's not trying to put anything in the books, he's not that interested. Within about a week or so, he's not that interested. Right? So these three strategies are going to allow you to, number one, teach men exactly how you want, how you deserve to be treated. Right? And that's going to happen through time, not just maybe on one occasion. But the more you do that, the more comfortable you're going to become, that it's going to become second nature. Men will see that behavior on you right away and they will adjust. They will either give you what you want through that behavior, the, through what you demand, or they'll just walk away, which is, again, completely fine because that's just not the right person for you. But otherwise, they will stick around and they will tr treat you and, 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 and adjust their behavior in order to continue getting access to you. Now, before you go, if you found this video interesting, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Have you tried these things before? What are you looking forward to trying? And if you did try, what were the results? Stick around to watch another one of my videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.